Hey, welcome to the broadcast. My name is Jeremy Fahm, the pastor here at Accelerate Church, and this is my wife. Hi, I'm Erin, and we are so excited here at Accelerate Church that you have joined and tuned in today, and we invite you to come sometime. Just come visit us. We'd love to have you and see you, and I just want you to know that the Holy Spirit has a word just for you today. You may be going through all kinds of things in life, but if you will tune in to His voice and His word, He has your answer. That's right. If you can't join us in person at 10 a.m. on Sundays at 4400 South Crockett, then you ought to go to our website, AccelerateChurch.cc. We have all our sermons there, and you can watch our services live and be a part of what God is doing here at Accelerate Church. But right now, we're going to get into the word today. Jesus on the cross defeated Satan. Yeah, he knocked his teeth out. He defeated hell. He defeated depression. He defeated sickness. He defeated poverty and everything under the curse of the law. And now if you're in Christ, you've been redeemed from the curse of the law. And now the blessing of Abraham is rightfully yours. But how is it that all that could be true and yet Satan could have an advantage over a person like yourself? I'll tell you how ignorance. And this is how he works in a subtle cunning way and he preys upon those with the least amount of revelation knowledge let me repeat one thing that you need to catch today there are two kinds of knowledge in this world there's revelation knowledge and there's sense-based knowledge sense-based knowledge is based upon your senses your five senses and you need that if you're crossing the street use that sense-based knowledge Don't be so spiritual that you say, well, I don't have to look for a a semi. Though he's honking his horn, I feel the rumble. I'm just going to walk across anyway. Don't do that. Right? God gave you those senses for a reason. And sense-based knowledge has a role in your life that's important. However, when it comes to the spiritual warfare that you're in, it's not going to get you anywhere. Because many times what you see looks impossible. But with God, all things are possible. To him that believes, all things are possible. So don't ever say it's impossible unless you've checked in with God first. See, but the devil's going to prey on people that say, well, it's impossible. There's no way this time that I'm going to fill in the blank, whatever it is, be healed or come out of the hole that I've dug myself in financially. Hey, there's always a way when you serve the way maker. Is anybody with me today? So refuse to stay ignorant specifically of the devil's devices. Devices here means thoughts. Did you know the majority of the thoughts that you think don't come from you? In fact, I'll go ahead and just say this. This might shock some of you. None of the thoughts just come from you. You know what people say? Well, I was just over here wondering if it's just me or... No, it's not just you. You see, thoughts either are birthed from Satan, the kingdom of darkness... Or from God in the kingdom of light. And you should be able to discern which thought is which. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare, which tells you you're in warfare. Most Christians don't realize when they cry out to Jesus, they signed up for warfare. But I like to say it this way, welcome to the fight club. Where it's a fight to live righteous. And you recognize your flesh doesn't have a problem with you until you surrender to the king. And then you realize, oh, the flesh has got a problem with this. And so do all your fleshy friends. But see, the devil wants you ignorant of all this. He wants you to think that he's never sending a thought. But you also couple with this about the weapons of our warfare that are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, taking every thought captive. Add to that that we've been given armor. And with the shield of faith, it says you're able to quench every fiery dart, every fiery missile, every fiery thought that the devil sends your way. So if you're not in faith, then guess what? That missile's getting through. Have you seen the news and what's going on in Israel? They have something called the Iron Dome. Most of those rockets that are sent are shot down by the Iron Dome. Thank God for that, right? Well, that's exactly how you have to be because every day of your life, you're going to be bombarded, whether it's social media, it's that little device some of you can't even put down in the sermon. I'm not mad. I'm just pointing out that we are addicted. You drive down the highway. How many times have I seen it? You've seen it if you paid attention. People are swerving. I'm like, what's wrong? Have they been drinking? No, they're holding their phone while they're driving like this. Because they can't be separated from it. Right? So we, I didn't mean to preach about you right in front of you like that. But what's coming at you through that? Well, it depends what you're listening to, what you're looking at. If it's your Bible app that usually gets the least amount of attention on your apps, just check out your time over the last week and verify whether that's true or not. Then it's good things. 
But the majority of your time is spent watching news, watching videos, shorts. You ever notice how addictive they are? And don't sit here and look at me like y'all don't watch shorts. The older generation is like, well, shorts, that's what you wear in the summertime. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about short videos. I mean, you hit, on, you hit one and you're liable to sit there and watch 50. And you're like, oh, I got to go. What, where's my time going? The sad thing is people do that in church, watching shorts. No wonder the Holy Spirit's limiting what He can do in your life, see. Why am I talking about that? Not to shame you for that, but to let you know something. That many of your thoughts that hit your mind come through the doors that you open up. And... You need to know this. The Holy Spirit's the one that inspired Paul to write this. So you, if you mad, get mad about a sermon like this, you might as well understand you're mad at the Holy Spirit. But he didn't give you this warning about the enemy's devices so that you'd be afraid, but so you'd be warned. Right? I guess it's kind of the catch that even the weatherman finds himself in around springtime here in Texas. If there's a tornado watch, tornado warning, they'll interrupt your favorite television broadcast, no matter if it's right at the juicy part. To let you know that your town's under the gun, you better take cover now. Now, I've never heard anyone, and of course I don't know everybody, but I've never been around anyone as ignorant as to get angry at the weatherman and think that he's hating on you because he's warning you. So with the message you're hearing today, don't you dare turn this on me and think that I'm hating on you. I'm simply possessed by the Holy Spirit, and he called me to warn you today. Yeah. Yeah. I figured it'd go over real big like that, real huge, you know. And this American culture that we live in, I'm going to expose today one reason why statements like this seem so out of place. Why a warning from a pulpit seems like strange, odd, because it's not happening in the vast majority of pulpits across America, really across the world. Most pastors today are concerned about how you feel. I'm more concerned about what does God say? I love you. I'm glad you're here. Praise the Lord. Absolutely. I'm glad you're here. Glad for everyone streaming that will see this by television. Thank God for all of that. Get contacted every week from people that see this from all over Texas. We cover 75% of all Texas households on television now. Praise the Lord. That's a blessing. But did you know that? I mean, anyone's listening. If they listen, they wouldn't have to be ignorant. But, but see, the, the thing about this, the fight has been amped up. And most Christians don't recognize it because they're not engaged in the fight. Why has the fight been amped up? I just exposed the reason. Because most Christians aren't engaged in the fight. You see, demons have always been demons. The demonic has always been demonic, freaky, strange, always spitting out green, levitating, doing weird stuff. The demonic's always been the demonic. But most Christians don't even really seem to raise an eyebrow anymore even when you talk like this. As we just go put them in padded cells and move on with our life and, and think, well, we're just blinking like a frog in a West Texas hailstorm. Like, well, it's just live, man. Go put those people up. They're crazy. No, there's demons loose. And I got news for you. They're gunning for you and your family. And the devil preys on those that are ignorant. And this scripture tells us this. Because of widespread ignorance and because people don't like to hear a warning and can't hardly sit through it, The fight's been amped up. Demons are having their way. The Antichrist is soon to be on the scene. If you don't understand this, Israel's in an uproar. This isn't going to calm down anytime soon. Oh, they might come up with some kind of treaty, but do you understand? This started with COVID a few years back, really started decades before this, but everything shifted in 2020 across the world. We're now prepared, even closer than we've ever been, more prepared than we've ever been for someone to come and tell us You can't do this, you can't do this, you can't buy there without doing this. Even in our own city, people that are Christians sitting in in leadership as civil leaders here said if you go into businesses here, well, they voted four to one that you're going to be fined $2,000 if they don't require a mask. All this is just preparation. People understand when I expose this, are you mad at them? No, I'm not mad. Most of them are Christian brethren or sister. But they had their minds captured. And I'm concerned because if you saw someone today up here spitting out green foam, you saw someone like you see on the Hollywood commercials 
Little girls talking in deep voices. Well, you know that's demonic. But you don't recognize a demonic thought. You're ignorant of his thoughts, his devices. So then he has an advantage over you, and he never should have an advantage over a Christian. I believe that preaching in 2023 without a warning tone is a disservice because I believe it is absolutely necessary for your survival to hear the warnings from God that he's written to us in the New Testament. I say that because of some of the scripture we're going to look at today, such as 2 Corinthians. Stay in that book and turn to chapter 11, if you would, and look at this in verse 3. Paul wrote this. The minister who brought the revelation of grace wrote this. I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, cunningness, King James says, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. So here's a warning. Your mind is the battlefield. Your mind is where the enemy is trying to bring pollution. Wake up! Hi, my name is Erin File, and I'm the pastor's wife here at Accelerate Church where we are telling people, wake up. If you have been lulled to sleep in this crazy life, it's time to wake up to who you are called to be. God has called you. And you might say, Erin, well, well, my life is, is pretty pitiful. It, it doesn't match the church. Well, you know what? Who cares about the past? It's time to change that. Today is your day to change it. Today is a new day. God's given you a new day. His mercies are new every morning and His mercies are towards you today to say, come, come to the house of the Lord. Come to Accelerate Church. Come, the Holy Spirit's drawing you. He's calling you. I believe that's why you're watching even now because the Holy Spirit is saying, I know you by name and come, come to God, come to His family and learn to live in freedom, learn to live in peace and learn to live in joy. We want you here at Accelerate Church. Your mind is where the enemy is trying to bring pollution. You're born again. You're a spirit being. Everything in your spirit's brand new. That's what we just celebrated with these baptisms. But you've got a mind that still thinks the way it always has, and you've got to renew that mind. And the enemy has set up all these strongholds. A stronghold, by definition, is a way of thinking. All these battles that you're going to face are in your mind. And really, the name Satan means someone that's going to hit you and hit you and hit you and hit you and hit you. And that's how thoughts come. Especially when you get alone. I'm ugly. I'm not, I'm not good looking. I, I don't fit into society. I'm, all these thoughts are not coming from you. And the enemy is praying to God that you're going to speak it. Because if he can get you to speak that thought, now he's got power into your life. How did he deceive Eve? Well, he showed up to Eve and asked this question. Did God say? And the enemy's never changed his playbook. He always comes to people and he says, did God say? And if you don't know what God said any better than Eve, you'll be exactly where she was, have the exact same results, and you'll be deceived. Now I notice... That the serpent didn't go to Adam. And when you read your Bible, you find that God spoke to Adam and it was up to Adam to lead his family and teach the word to his wife. But he must not have done a very good job because she influenced him stronger than he influenced her. Well, that sounds like the American culture. Big time. Big time. What does this verse say? Paul, the apostle of grace, said, I fear this is after he's preached. This is the second book to Corinthians. This is the 11th chapter. He's deep now talking to these Christians. Are you following me? This isn't like surface level. He's like, I fear, lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. Makes it sound like the enemy's not going to come with a pitchfork. He's not going to come with teeth like this. 
He's going to come in sheep's clothing. He's going to come in a crafty manner. He's going to come in a, as we've read in Colossians 2, a so-called philosophical, smart way. With words that you can't tell. Are they good or are they bad? Sounds so good. Sounds so loving. Well, with what's happening in Israel, as I started to say a while ago, things are going to continue to be tumultuous. They might have a peace treaty. But I can tell you right now, Israel's different this time, and they should be. They're not going to stop. No matter how the American press and press all over the world publicizes, I've been telling you guys in this church since 2015 that I had good word on this. That a war's coming where you're going to see innocent civilians killed. You're going to see children crying like I saw in the news this week. Saying, we're innocent, we did nothing. And of course, the American news media is going to show that. And I'll tell you right now, this whole thing's flipping against Israel. It's been prophesied. Even the lightest studier of <laughs> eschatology could find this. If they would just barely give over to study, you're going to figure out no one's going to support Israel soon. Well, the church is as long as we're here. We're a hindering force, praise God. Yeah. To what? Lawlessness. You see, it's lawless to live in a place where people can fly in on a little parachute and shoot people. Or they can come through the sea on boat and shoot people. They can walk and just start killing people at random. People say, well, that happens in America. I know. But, you know, if you don't go to gun-free zones, you have the ability to fight for yourself. They don't have that in Israel. I asked a, a Jewish man, I said, is it like that in Israel? He said, no, not like here in America. I said, wow, and there's so many people in America that in their head are stupid. What do I mean? They're against guns. They're afraid of them. You better arm yourself. Legally, you better get trained. Oh, that scares me. Why does that scare you? We're here, and I'm not going out easy. I told my boys this morning, I said, man, y'all gave me your Christmas list. Time to rewrite this. Well, what do we ask for? I said, why don't you ask for a BB gun? I'd take you out back here and teach you to shoot. <laughs> yeah. You got to learn to get some aim, you know what I mean? I got seven kids. I got my own army. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's see, that makes... You know, liberals don't really watch us anyway. They know we're affiliated with Kingdom Keys Network. So they just stay away. Kingdom Keys is repellent to liberals. Look at this verse, 2 Corinthians 11.3. Paul said, I fear lest somehow. Check that out. Somehow, somehow, somehow. As the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. You see, the simplicity in Christ is simply this. There's no one in here that hasn't told a lie. There might be one or two that hasn't stolen something, but most of you have stolen something. Most of you have used God's name as a curse word at some point. Hopefully not today. Maybe it is you. I have no idea who comes through these doors or who watches this. But if you've done any of that or looked upon someone and lusted after him, you've committed adult adultery in your heart, uh, you, you sinned against a holy God. What does that mean? You've broken God's holy law. The Bible says all have sinned. It doesn't say all are sinning now. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That means all deserve hell. That's what it means. I'm, I'm talking about the simplicity that's in Christ. Yet one man took your place. See, no, no other religion has a man that took their place. All other paths, all other religions other than following Jesus Christ of Nazareth are false. There's one way to be born again, one way to be saved. That's Jesus being your Lord and you following your great shepherd with all of your heart, loving him so that he can teach you how to love others.
Pastor Jeremy Fowl here from Accelerate Church in Amarillo, Texas, inviting you to watch our weekly television broadcast right here on this channel. Accelerate Church is in Amarillo and we offer services on Sunday, 10 a.m. and Wednesday, 7 p.m. We'd love to have you. If you can't be here in person, you ought to stream online at acceleratechurch.cc. That's our website. You can find all our information there. We offer weekly children's ministry, high school age ministry, college age ministry, and more at Accelerate Church. You live in the middle of a culture right now that's elevated the second commandment above the first. If you get things out of order, you're going to be confused. The devil did that one day. The worship leader decided he's going to take over. Flicked out of heaven. Lucifer became Satan. God did not create Satan. He chose to become Satan. Yeah. And Satan, right here, deceived Eve. Adam gave in to it, committed treason back in the garden. Released on earth, the curse. Jesus came and took your place. He's the only one that was beaten, didn't look human on that cross. The only one that took your punishment and was separated from a holy God. When he never broke the law, he fulfilled it to the letter. He was perfect. Virgin born. Yeah. These, this kind of talk makes demons mad and nervous. It does. That's, this is what's under attack in our day. Yet the king of glory came in the form of a man. He was a man and took your place on the cross. He died. He rose again after three days and nights, just like he said he would do. He walked with people for about 40 days on the planet, and then he was raptured right off of Mount of Olives right there. Isn't that cool? Whoop, they watched him go up. Acts 1, you can read about it. We looked at it recently in a series. What am I talking to you about? The simplicity that's in Christ. Jesus, Hebrews 5, 9 says, became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. His payment of his blood was good enough for every man and every woman across the whole planet. Peter said, God's not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. Right there's where we have a disconnect. Because not everyone thinks they need to repent. Now they listen to voices that tell you, all religions are seeking God in their own way. We're all children of God. Lies. Only those following Jesus with Jesus, the Lord of their life, are children of God following God. That means you're in the minority this morning. Yeah. Somebody said, oh, I know all this. I learned this years ago. Well, my goodness, this is the simplicity that's in Christ. And the enemy's coming to get this all confused. Because if you keep it simple, saint... Guess what? Did y'all catch that? My coach told me, kiss, Jeremy. I ain't kissing you. Boys don't kiss boys. He didn't say it. He, he would have slapped me if I said that. He said, keep it simple, stupid. I changed it. Keep it simple, saint. Keep it simple. Because the enemy's trying to confuse this thing. Make God hard to understand. There may be things you don't understand, but let me, just, let me just tell you. Can I cut to the chase today? Stay in faith. Stick with the Word. Because you've been transferred out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Now walk as children of light. Wow. If you've been transferred and you're a child of God, you might as well act like a child of God. Well, what do children do? They imitate. My son is two years old. What, my youngest? His name is Colin Jeremy, and he is hilarious. He is. He's to that age that just about anything I say, he will repeat verbatim. It's so cute, or he'll try, you know. And we say, praise the Lord. He'll come out, praise the Lord. It's, it's different. I can't really imitate him. I wish I had him up here. Maybe he would do it, but don't go get him. That would be a little distracting. But I love it because he'll imitate. And every time I see that, I think of Ephesians 5.1, which says this. Are you ready? Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Wow. Imitate him. What does that mean? Well, here's one thing it means. If he loves it, you love it. If he hates it. Uh, what happened? If he loves it, you love it. Can I get an Amen. If he hates it, you hate it. Can I get another amen? amen? Now, here's the problem. I knew it just as well as I know my name. Saying 
that there's something God hates is going to ruffle people's feathers because they have not been taught that God hates. But perfect love must have a hatred and abhorrence of evil. See, Americans that say they're Christians think they're called to be more loving than Jesus, and that's an impossible mountain to climb. Jesus is love. Yeah. But Jesus also got angry. He didn't sin. He didn't make a whip three times. Some people don't know that's in there but three times in the Bible. So go study that for yourself. I remember the first time I heard a preacher say that. I said, no way. He's so loving. He's so kind. I was falling for that, just that one side of God, even though the Bible clearly says, behold, look at the goodness and the severity of God. I ignored that last part. Because, see, we want to relate to a God that's good, 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 good. Severe, uh-uh, I don't relate to that at all. Well, then you don't know God. You don't know God, and you can't walk with God unless you know God. You can't imitate Him unless you know Him. So when I say, if He loves it, you love it, Americans, by the dozens that say they're Christians, will say, amen. Well, if He hates it, you got to hate it. They're like, huh? What? Let me remind you of this something real quick. You ready? He's the leader. You're the follower. If you're taking notes and you don't get anything else out of today, that was worth coming to hear. He's the leader. You're the follower. He doesn't have to come bless your mess because you don't seek him and ask him and inquire of him before you decide to do something. I'm going to go do what I want. I want God to bless. It is not going to be blessed. If it goes against what God already said. Therefore, at minimum, you ought to inquire of the Lord. I've watched people do this. They'll leave and pull out of an alive church like this. And they'll move somewhere else in the country for $10 an hour. Never stopping to calculate it. It costs $30 an hour to live there. It's amazing to me. You're going to have to evaluate some things. Adjust the way you see things. Let me just say it like this. If you see it the same as God sees it, then you're going to say it the same way that God says it. You're called to follow him. Therefore, if you don't see it exactly the way the word says it, then it's time for you to make an adjustment. Because God does not change. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Never change him. There's no shadow of turning in him at all. He's a God that cannot lie. So once he spoke, let me tell you, he's not changing. He is not changing. That should bring you hope today. But here's what it means. You're going to have to adjust the way you see things to match how he sees things. Let me say it again. If you see it the way he sees it, then you're going to say it the way he says it. So your mouth reveals whether you're seeing things right or not. Pastor Jeremy here. That's all the time we have today. So I hate to interrupt myself preaching there, but we had a good time today. Yes, we did. And we invite <laughs> you to come in person. Come see us. Stop by and say, hey, Pastor Jeremy. Hey, Miss Erin. I saw you on TV because we would love to meet you Absolutely. and shake your hand. Absolutely. And be sure and tune in again next time on the same station, same time for the Accelerate Church television broadcast.